contract of competency board is in session for July the 12th, 2023. Madam Secretary, would you read the board rules? Yes, sir. Please silence all cell phones. If you wish to speak, please let the board secretary know in advance. Otherwise, raise your hand for the board chair to recognize your request. When the chairman calls you to speak, come to the podium, adjust the microphone, then state your name and address for the record. You are requested to keep your remarks brief and factual. Both parties of an issue will be granted uniform maximum time to speak. This usually runs between three to five minutes. This hearing is considered quasi-judicial. Conduct is formal and profane or derogatory comments will not be tolerated. Thank you. Do we have a quorum? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. With five members present, we do, and Mr. Lister is en route. Very good. Thank you. Do we have proof of publication of the notification of this meeting? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. It was published on July 6, 2023 in the Scammy County Sun Press. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of April the 5th. Move approval. Have second. A motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes for April the 5th are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the minutes for May 3rd. So moved. <clears throat> second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the minutes for May 3rd are approved. We move to item five on the agenda, which is a public forum. It's an opportunity for the public to come before the board on any subject that is not on the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I did not receive any request for public forum speaker. Very good. We move forward. Board Secretary status report. Uh, at this time, Mr. Chairman, I had a request from Mr. Pruitt. Uh, he has a case under probable cause hearing. He has an appointment and needs to leave around 9 to 30, and he would like his case to be moved up and heard as the first case under probable cause after the contractor applications. With the approval of the board? Yes, we need a motion and approval from the board. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded into discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign, being none. A motion to move Mr. Pruitt to the beginning of the probable cause is approved. At this time, we're moving to contractor applications. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have um, five applications that's going to be present today. And the first one is Joseph Robinson, and he is here for an application for reinstatement. Mr. Robinson, if you will come forward. Mr. Robinson here. I did try to leave, call them yesterday to leave a message as a reminder. Their, for, their voicemail was full, so I could not okay. make contact. We can, still, we can still entertain this application. Yes, sir, you can. Okay. It's not a requirement of this board that the applicant be What's present. What's the recommendation of the staff? It's actually an application for reinstatement. Um, he had a, his license was inactive for five years, three months, 12 days and um, he has paid his application fee. However, the other dues are still owed. Staff doesn't give a recommendation on reinstatements. We get only applications for so this examination. This is five and a half years since it expired. Uh, I would entertain a motion to postpone this until he can become, until he come present or be present. So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to delay this application until the uh, applica applicant can be, be appear before the board. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next. Next on the agenda, we have Dustin Vaughn. He's here for an application for examination for residential contractor. Mr. Vaughn, if you would come forward. He is another that I did, I did attempt to call as a reminder of today's hearing. His voicemail also was full, so therefore I could not leave him a message. So he's not here. We can still consider his application for examination. Yes, sir. And after we have um, reviewed his application and called past employment, uh, we do uh, recommend that he would be approved. Okay. Motion to approve. 
Motion made. Is there a second? Is there a second? Being no second, the motion to approve dies. Move on to third. We need some direction on the application. Do you want to have it represented at the next meeting if he can show up? I would recommend we do that. I mean, I think it's important that if they're applying for a license, they're present. If they're not, then we need to wait till they're ready to come up here. Entertain a motion to delay till he can be here. Motion to move it to the next meeting. Second. If he can make it. Motion made and seconded. End of discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion for delay of the examination application for examination for Dustin Vaughn till he can be present is approved. Thank you. Next. Third item we have on the agenda for application um, is Jeremy Weidman. He is here for an application for examination for a residential pool contractor. Mr. Weidman, if you'd come up. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Jeremy Weidman. My address is 3214 Clemson Road, Gulf Breeze, Florida, 32563. Thank you for being here. Yes, sir. And, sir, staff recommendation is to approve his application. Motion to approve. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the application for examination for residential pool contractor for Jerry Weideman is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Weideman, and don't come back to see us. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next. Next on the agenda, we have um, Jake Henry. He's here for an application for examination for general contractor. Mr. Henry, if you're present, please come forward. He's here. Jake Henry, 2790 Noack Dairy, uh, Pensacola, Florida, 32533. Thank you for being here. Yes, sir. What's staff? I'm sorry, I was just reviewing my notes. Um, on his, he's actually already passed his, um, his test with the state. The problem that we had with his is his business and law was a score of 70 and in Escambia County you have to have a 75. Um, so how this works with this state is you actually pass three tests, not two. They break down um, business and law into two examinations. Um, he scored really good on one and then a 70 on the other which ultimately kind of equals out to our requirement. It's at this board's discretion of whether you would like for him to take business and law with us or if he will accept his test scores from the state. He, he passed the trade examination, flying colors, no problem there. Uh, I'd recommend we uh, go ahead and approve his application. I second. Motion made, second. Any further discussion? Mr. Chair, oh, yes. wait a minute. Uh, I'd like to just say that I'm thankful to see a young man coming here, getting into this industry. There's a bunch of us old guys. <laughs> and uh, to see this is refreshing. This is something that you want to look forward to. So you come from a good family and uh, wish you best of luck, man. Sure, Can I give a question uh, on my motion is, we want to move him not to have to take the application? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure they're clear that the motion was to have him go ahead and but move forward. Like yes. And if it makes the board feel better, he does have a Bachelor of Science in uh, Business Administration that he did receive, so that does help him on the business law side. <laughs> Do I need to restate that motion? Um, so to restate that motion for you, Mr. Bell, Please. you approve for him to not have to take the business and law examination through the county. You feel he, that he has already met the requirement. Correct. Mm -hmm. the state, the uh, motion has been restated. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, that the motion is approved for you him not to have to take the business law portion of the examination. Thank you. Thank you. 
Don't come back to see us. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next. And the last item we have on the agenda for the uh, contractor applications is Adam Hunter Motes. He's here for an application for examination for Master Plumber with Gas. And he is present. And if you'll stay. Olson, here's another young uh, <laughs> It's Adam Motes, 1821 West Government Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32502. Thank you for being here. We do recommend that his um, application be approved. He has over 11 years with the same company, and he's trying to seek out his own license. Good. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the application for examination motion is approved for, Hunt, for Adam Hunter Motes for Master Plumber with gas. Thank you. Thank you. Don't you come back. <laughs> We'll move in now to item eight. First one. We are actually going to go oh, to number right. two as previously approved. This item is Jonathan Pruitt doing business as Addison Riley LLC, state certified license number, no, that's state registered license number RC29027807. Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230331-COM. It's in regard to Carl Barber, homeowner complainant at 4618 Baybrook, Baybrook Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. Mr. Pruitt, if you don't mind, you can have a seat for a minute. We're going to go through some little housekeeping, and we'll get you up here, okay? The license number on here is incorrect. We will get we will get it corrected on the agenda. It is state certified license number, just the license number that was read into the record was is incorrect. The correct license number is C C C C one three three two 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 two. That's my roofing license. Correct. Yeah, and the, and this case has to do with your roofing license, correct? Yeah. yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. So now that we've got that correct license number into the record, we'll move forward. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Barber, are you present today? Yes, ma'am. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes, ma'am. And Mr. Pruitt, we see that you're present. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Uh, limited due to litigation. Is there anyone else that's going to provide testimony for this particular hearing today? Okay, at this time, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Pruitt and Mr. Barber, along with Ms. Reber, sworn in. Uh, and again, Ms. Reber will remain sworn for the duration of these hearings. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was on, excuse me, February 10th, 2023. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, he did and it is attached. Did the respondent provide supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, it is. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? Um, a search on Barber's property resulted in a re-roof permit being pulled on January 17th, 2021. Um, that this case got transferred, uh, excuse me, continued a couple of times. So at that time, the permit expired on June 17th, 2021. But uh, Mr. Pruitt has since reinstated that permit and had a past final inspection. Staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, 
A motion to move all documentation into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837D4, again, at the time of uh, this report, the, there had been no final inspection conducted. Um, that's since been cured. Code section 1837D8, uh, allegedly, um, Mr. Barber states that he had um, some damage to his pool liner and um, however, I, you know, I, haven't, I don't have any pictures or anything like that, just he's given me documentation about that. And um, it is in continued litigation, as Mr. Pruitt said. All right, Mr. Barber, this is your opportunity to address the board in regard to your case. If you could come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record. Carl Barber, 4618 Baybrook Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32514. So, Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. during the re roof, it was noted uh, I've got all the documentation here and pictures if you'd like to see them. Uh, the morning after the tear off, my pool was more than half empty. And I witnessed some of the roofers, uh, laborers, pulling shingles and nails out of the pool. At that time, I called uh, pool service. They came over and dove into the pool, collected more nails, noticed there was a tear, have documentation of that. Um, there was a punch list that was provided. He never came back. As Riley never, never came back. Uh, to finish the punch list, just a few items on there. Meantime, I had ARC Chimney uh, Suite and Inspection Company come out to do a uh, investigation inspection because when we lit the chimney, he, he replaced the cap in the front. Well, apparently, it was the wrong one. So ARC Chimney Company came out and told me I had the wrong cap and flu on there, and the uh, chimney was unsafe. Well, Mr. Pruitt, which I've never met, uh, denied that, said we replaced it with this same one that came off there. Well, since then, I've had a termite inspection, and the, the inspector noticed the whole chase, the interior of the chase, is charred. That the chase that's on there allows hot gas to come back down into the chase. The flue cap is too small, so. That's about it in a nutshell. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Barber? Thank you, Mr. Did, Barber. Go ahead. Question. Go ahead. You said that the cap is too small. Who who identified that? I mean, who was you? ARC Chimney Inspection Service. I saw that in here. Are they like a certified? Yes. They do the. I, I know Chimney Suite. They do the cleaning of the flu. Yes, they do also the the caps and the flu. So their license as far as installed, yeah. they know all the proper Special installation stuff. Okay. Also, I, I would like to note um, uh, one of your board members called me a couple times, former board member. Uh, what was his name? I can't, Drew. Drew Dennis. Drew stated. Dennis. And I guess it was some form of harassment. I don't know if he's friends with Mr. Pruitt or not, but he, he was advising me not to go through with this complaint. He called me twice. So just as an added note. But that's all I got. Any, 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 any pictures or anything? I don't believe so. Yeah. No, I don't I don't think you provided me those pictures. I'll give them to the board, sir. No worries. Thank 
you. Thank you, Mr. Oh, well, thank you. Mr. Pruitt, if you'd like to come up, state your name and address for the record, and this is your opportunity to address the board. Sure. Jonathan William Pruitt. Address is, uh, my business address is 10 East Tahar Drive, Pensacola, 32503. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much, and if you would like, I don't typically come from the board, so if you like, do you want to ask me questions, or would you like me just to state what? Just a second, Mr. Pruitt. We do have some photos in the backup. However, to be on the safe side, we need a motion to enter that documentation into the record. So moved. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to add these additional photos and documentation into evidence is approved. Um, so <clears throat> this was an insurance claim, and as many people know, um, I do a lot of insurance restoration as an expert witness who travels the country doing nothing but trials. I have to be in Panama City today for a trial um, in a, uh, another insurance case. So um, our company is known for integrity, and we're also known for doing the right thing. Um, Mr. Uh, Barber apparently has an issue with a chimney flu and a cap. Um, this was an insurance claim from Hurricane Sally. We did replace the cap with like kind quality. However, we did not touch the flu. We are not involved in the flu, and that is actually into the court uh, records as in our complaint. Um, with that said, uh, to make this go away, we offered Mr. Barber $1,000 uh, to make up for that, just to make it go away. That was un, uh, not uh, good enough, so he filed complaints with the Department of Agriculture, Better Business Bureau, Google, anybody else you could think of, and in return, we filed suit. Um, so we tried to do the right thing just to make it go away because it's just easier than coming to these things and making me fly from Fort Myers. So we have now entered a, a lawsuit on li for libel, slander, and uh, obviously breach because he did not pay. Um, the insurance company citizens opened coverage on his pool liner. They paid for repair. Stated to our team, if you find additional damages, please let us know. We will come back and look at the damages. So that part apparently did not happen. There are also in your files there, which I did not submit anything today. I was kind of surprised we allowed um, uh, information at the hearing that I did not review at all. Um, but you'll see that the pool is tarped. Now, I run a forensic engineering firm. The velocity of those shingles and those nails to have to leave a roof, slide down, launch 12 feet into the pool, make its way down to the bottom of the pool, and then a little inch and a quarter aluminum nail tear a what 12 mil liner something like that uh, is highly unlikely however um, we did everything we could to make this right this is in legal proceedings uh, moving forward so I really can't state too much more uh, we do have a motion for summary judgment coming up so with that I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you would like um, anybody have more questions thank you Mr. Chair, I have a question. I guess it may be the staff. What the alleged violations is a violation of state or local building code or law. Which building code law is it that? Is Ms. Mr. Lister, so previously, again, this, this hearing has been continued on several occasions. Right, I remember. And historically, it ha had not had a final inspection. It subsequently has had a final That's inspection. That's what I thought it was. So that has That's been. That's what it was. So is that still valid then as a violation or should that be removed? It's that. up to the board to, re to say that that's no longer a violation. But it has been, the permit has been final. Yes, sir, it has. I believe that was in May. I thought that was part of the last meeting was that. It actually did not make. It did, not, it did not get resolved at that time. No, but it was discussed. Like yes, sir. Yeah, we cleared it. As soon as we found out about it, we cleared it up. As soon as they, uh, I would like to clear, what happened was they had an improper address on there. Um, a staff member quit. And we also have in our contracts that we don't call in final inspections uh, until we are paid. 
for reasons just like this. Um, so as soon as we were informed about it, we had a conversation and we went to change our address multiple times. And then as we found out recently, Miss Teresa gave us a call, which was very kind of her. We were emailing in a form to change our address. And we were been able to do that with all the other municipalities, but apparently we have to draw, we have to deliver or mail a wet signature and not can't just to change our address. So Miss Teresa, and the last time we spoke, is that you? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. She gave me a call and um, the next day, I think or within 48 hours we had delivered a wet signature uh, for to change the address and all that. Administrative error on my fault. If I'm guilty of that, I'll take full responsibility for my for me and my staff. You want to remove that uh, I, I do have one question. So the, the tarp was placed on the pool I'm before sorry, that uh, the tarp was placed on the pool before um, you two did the teardown? Yes ma'am. Thank you. It's in your photos. Did it stay on to the duration of the job? Good question. During demo, for sure. Really, in, in new, I, I can't tell you for sure if it was removed before the installation, but we all know in construction, we're not doing demo anymore. You know, we're talking about scraps on the, the gables, the valleys. That's nothing you just chuck over your head, and you're definitely not going to throw nails. And if the argument is that nails caused the tear, well, then it had to happen during the, the demolition process. Although the insurance company paid for a repair to the liner so before Chair, we started. Yeah, so I'm looking at both these. So if the roofing permit, I mean, the roofing inspection is done and it's passed, so that doesn't constitute any violation. And then a mismanagement, misconduct of causing financial harm to the customer, again, in my opinion, this is a dispute that they're having outside of, the, it's a civil issue, and then we'll ask the county attorney that if there's a civil litigation going on, does that code section 1837 still apply? And in this case, I ask the board here, does it apply to this case? Because the job is completed. It's a matter of payment between the client and the contractor. And what's happened as far as the damage to the property, the alleged damage to the property is outside of the scheme of what I believe that we're allowed to yeah, decide on. And to tie into that question would be I, if the pool liner was damaged, but it's been replaced, is there no financial? There's no fi Is there any financial outlay then? That's right. There's that no financial be, harm. There's no financial harm at that point. It would seem. I believe Mr. Barber ha may have a additional commentary on that. Uh, yes, uh, I did pay. I did pay Spencer Penny uh, approximately four thousand dollars to come out and replace the liner. Did the insurance the stated there was an insurance that paid for that? No, I was out of pocket. I think Mr. Pruitt uh, misread uh, the insurance. The adjuster's quote, uh, it had $900 for a clean out after Hurricane Sally. Didn't say anything about damage. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, and Mr. Um, Barber actually brings up a good point. He is actually absolutely accurate, and that's what I alluded to. And I apologize for using incorrect terminology. Um, if you're not an insurance, you wouldn't know what this means, but it's called opening up coverage. So when the insurance company, let's say, pays for a repair to a roof, I'm just using an arbitrary number here, but then you find that the roof is unrepairable. Maybe you're changing out shingles and the shingles next to a tear, then they pay for the rest of the roof. If you don't take that to your insurance company and tell them, you're absolutely right. They will not pay for it because they don't know about it. However, as you heard, they did open up coverage on the, on the pool liner and it's the responsibility of the insured to go to the carrier and state, hey, we have another tear we need to get this covered. In addition, in insurance first party law, it's, a, it's one of those things where, my mind just trickled on me, excuse me, but in, when they open up coverage on something, and let's say I'm removing cabinets and the granite countertops break, they always break at the seam, sometimes they chip off, well, it wasn't covered because it wasn't physically damaged. However, if it was damaged in the process of repairing, say, cabinets that were flooded below the, the um, the countertop, they will pay for the countertops as collateral damage of the claim. So in this case, Mr. Barber has a great 
case to have his pool liner reimbursed to him. However, it's not Addison Riley who will be replacing that. It will be his insurance company. And we do insurance work, like over a thousand expert cases a year. Uh, we know this very well. All he has to do is call his insurance company and say, we found collateral damage, here's the invoice. It's not Addison Riley who pays for that, especially as just the roofer. Thank you. Yes, sir. What's the pleasure of the board? I suggest we uh, have a motion to remove the uh, uh, initial code violation for violation of state building codes because it's no longer applicable. So moved. Is there a second? I was going to ask, did the county attorney have any input for it? <coughs> There's a motion on the floor, so. A second. A second. 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 Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Do you have anything? Uh, not with a motion pending. Okay. Uh, All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to remove uh, code section 1837D4 as a alleged violation is approved. Now then, we only have one other code violation alleged. Do we have any comment from council? Well, it's still the discretion of this board to determine whether those uh, alleged uh, violations are applicable here. There's a separate forum for the civil claims, but I, those, again, I, th those are not relevant to what the board is doing here. I believe the matter before the board is, did Mr. Pruitt and his business entity, uh, as they repaired the structure, did he did they inadvertently cause damage which caused financial harm to the consumer that's the question before the yeah. board if the board feels that that's accurate th your choice is to either proceed to a disciplinary hearing or not no. chairman it's unfortunate we don't have the time or the uh, documentation that the civil case would have in order for us to properly investigate it and just make an arbitrary decision. Uh, so I would recommend that it either gets tabled until the civil litigation is over before we determine what the actual cause would be on this code section or, or remove it altogether and let the uh, municipalities or the, uh, the courts decide whether or not uh, if there has been a harm to uh, the client versus the contractor. Uh, because um, you know, we're making a decision right now, even though it's a small dollar amount decision, in my opinion, it's still a decision on a contractor's license. And when we really don't have the evidence that's going to be presented in a civil case. Well, I agree. I don't think I have enough information or enough evidence to, to move forward with the disciplinary piece. So the question would be, do we dismiss or do we postpone? Uh, if we dismiss, do, can they bring it back? If you dismiss this based on this code section violation, I, I don't think they could return back with that particular code violation. Uh, it's already been heard. You've decided to dismiss it. Do we have a pleasure of the board to dismiss or extend or? I mean, I'd be okay to extend it. Okay, make a motion to extend it. I'll make a motion. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion to extend it or table it until the civil litigation. A second. Though. Motion made, no second. A second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to extend this case until civil litigation is concluded, is approved. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, okay, so we're going to postpone this, which it's fine. Um, you, uh, I just flew back from Fort Myers for this case, so I can do it again. Um, if we, so the judge is going to make a uh, ruling on the motion for summary judgment. What, do you, uh, what are we waiting for to close this out? Because in, with all due respect, I feel like we're crossing into the legal world here because if you continue it, and let's say that, let's just say 
we are granted a motion for summary judgment, which means this isn't a jury question. That means we win. Do I need to come back to the board and say, hey, you remember that guy who filed a complaint on my license saying I financially harmed him? The judge says I didn't. Or does he have to come back to you and say, hey, you remember that judge? They said that, hey, I was actually wrong. Like, I, I, we're crossing the legal world. Okay. Field. Mr. Pruitt, Mr. Pruitt mm -hmm. once that civil litigation is over, either you or Mr. Barber will contact us, let us know the outcome of that litigation. We can present it before the board, and they, at that time, can determine whether to proceed or not. You don't have um, to be present. You, you do. It, if it is determined that it's going to proceed to disciplinary hearing, then you will be required to be present. Yeah. But commu communication is key. Uh, that's fine. I just wanted to know what the protocol yeah. is because I want to that's comply it. and not get another letter. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine with your decision. I have no problem. Thank you. Anything else? All right. You have a great day. Right. Thanks. Move in now. Let's get back to uh, item one. Item one. Item one is Hallie S. Lovato doing business as High Point DBR LLC, state registered license number RB29003574, contractor competency board complaint number 220442COM. It's in regard to Carl and Carol Moody, the homeowner complainants at 5700 Grand Lagoon Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida 32507. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. Ms. Moody, are you present today? Thank you. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Lovato, are you present today? Uh, Alex and Diane, I'm present. Yes, sir. And are you going to provide testimony or do you have a request for the board? I have a request for the board. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and let Mr. Andrade uh, address the board with his request. Okay. very much. Uh, Alex Andrade, uh, 1500 East Cross Street, Pensacola, Florida. Um, I'm an attorney representing High Point DBR today and Hallie Lovato. Um, uh, Mr. Lovato contacted our law firm um, late last week and asked us to, to look through this case. We represent High Point DBR and Hallie Lovato in litigation with the Moody's. Um, it's a construction defect litigation on the same property. Uh, uh, amended complaints were filed last August. Um, Answers to the amended complaint have been filed. Third-party defendants have been brought into the case. And my request to the board today would just be to postpone this um, uh, until the civil litigation is concluded. That's within our purview. <clears throat> uh, we've had a request. I'll make a motion to extend. I second. Motion made. Seconded. Any further discussion? The motion is to extend this until the civil litigation is concluded. Yes, sir. I believe Mr. Moody would like to address the board in regard to that request. Yes, I would. Okay. Yes, your rules and procedures, section 15, article 6, basically say that it's irrelevant what's going on on the civil matter because, you know, the complaint is about the license of somebody who's still out there building. And I think, um, you know, Mr. Tolbert has done an inspection of the property. There are blatant violations of that company's own plans. And it just seems you guys would want to understand what happened and is it still continuing? So you don't have to extend this. Um, and your own rules and procedures imply you shouldn't extend it. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Moody, I, I don't think we have to, but I think we have the option to. Oh, you, you and will have the to. reason for the option, I spent a good amount of time yesterday evening reading over this, and it's uh -huh. pretty detailed. And um, But there's conflicting information in there from what I read well, from, you know, builder versus a third party who's come in, et cetera. There's like, there's even... I didn't see a concise path that was saying it was blatantly a builder at fault, period. I didn't see that. Have, Maybe have somebody you, else read have, it and saw it, but I didn't see that. Have so you read Mr. Tolbert's report? I, I read every bit of it last night. I stayed up way late last night going through. Yours particularly was of interest because of the depth of it. And, I, and, and the other thing I would like to say is in Mr. Tolbert's report, he basically took a look at the floor and said, this is so bad, I'm not even gonna look at all the other violations you have listed. 
and he basically said the house is not habitable, which is true. We moved out in November of 19 so they could do the demo. I have provided a very detailed report from Joe Duriel that runs through the specific problems with the house. And when I got Mr. Tolbert's report, it was very interesting. He said it appears that the uh, instructions or plans to put in the floor SIPs panels were not followed. And I said, well, we all thought it was pretty evident that that happened, but we couldn't specifically say what did they do wrong when they installed the floor panels. So I asked Joe Duriel to go back and do some more demo and take apart the floor system so they could say specifically what was not done properly when installing those floors. And I did furnish that report to Mr. Tolbert, like last week, and it's very specific. It says exactly what they omitted from the plans. And then the other specific violations are, and remember these are High Point's own plans, and they didn't implement to those plans. Mr. Moody. Uh, we're not here to pass judgment one way or the other. We have a motion on the floor, and I uh -huh. think your discussion uh, is not relevant to that motion. And, and Mr. Moody, unfortunately, you were not sworn in prior to that. I mean, I just, you were wanting to address the particular request. Yes. So. Yeah. I, I mean, your rules and procedures say what's happening. We on understand what our rules and procedures are. We have a motion on the floor, and we're going to consider that motion. Uh-huh. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion to delay until the civil litigation is concluded? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to delay this uh, probable cause hearing until the civil litigation is a concluded is approved. Item three. Yes. Number CGC 1510335, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230442COM. It's in regard to Jimmy and Shannon Seals, the homeowner complainants at 428 Orby Drive, Pensacola, Florida 32534. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Mr. and Ms. Seals, are you present today? Very good. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Thank you. And Mr. Prouty, are you present today? Yes. Thank you. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes. Perfect. If you could both, uh, if you could all please stand and be sworn in. Thank you. And just a reminder to the board that Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Um, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? It was on March 20th, 2023. Were you able to communicate with the complainants about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? I was. 
Did the complainants provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? They did, and it is attached. And did the respondent provide any supporting uh, documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did, and it is attached. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? A review of the permitting history for the Seals property indicated Prouty obtained permits for the garage addition and interior renovation on February 8, 2022. The garage passed framing inspection on October 22, 2022 and has net, hasn't had any other inspections. The renovation permit had a framing inspection on October 27, 2022. The uh, SEALs have since terminated uh, their contract, and so those permits are listed as terminated, contract terminated. Staff requests that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded in further discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to add all uh, presented documentation into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837D8, um, there were several, uh, well, some building violations that ended up having to uh, be corrected by the new contractor that the SEALs have hired. Also, there were um, non-payment of some subcontractors on the project that uh, Mr. Prouty had hired. Code section 1837 D9D, it was discovered that Mr. Prouty conducted some repairs of trusses, which um, I believe I'd say that right, he's not licensed to perform. The SEALs, uh, there's a report in there if we wanna look at that report. <laughs> not, not only is Mr. Tolbert's uh, inspection in there that the board requested that he do, there's also an engineering report. Okay. Code section 1837 D9F. Um, this goes back to the, the mismanagement and financial records. The SEALs requested uh, information for uh, things that had been paid for based off the bank draws. Code section 1837 D12B, um, all of this still still tying together. Um, okay, 1837 D15C, and that has to do with uh, the building permits and not obtaining applicable inspections in relation to windows. Mr. Ms. Sills, this is your opportunity to come and address the board in regard to the case. If you could both state your name and address for the record. Shannon Seals, 428 Orby Street. Pensacola, Florida, 32534, and on the paperwork, they have the, as Orby Drive, it's Orby Street. Jim Seals, 428 Orby Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. Go ahead. Okay. Um, we already addressed you and went through a long list last time. We are not gonna rehash all that. I just want to go up over a few things. We did terminate him based on his um, email to us saying he was not going to continue to protect us was why we went and terminated him was based on, and we asked him over and over again, please just finish the job. 
please just finish the job. And when he stated he wasn't, we terminated the permits just to protect ourselves. Um, I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, we did send him a request um, to send us all the um, subcontractors and suppliers because he personally told us that we were going to have a lien put on us on our for windows not being paid for. Um, he personally told us, I know that the electrician is still owed over $15,000. The plumber is close to $3,000. Um, the last time I talked to HVAC, it was $2,000. I don't know if any of this has been settled. That was the last time I talked to him. They, this was all owed. Um, but he had been paid for a lot of these things. The bank had, every time that we got a draw, he stated that he would either pay with it or it has been paid and he signed an affidavit. I have a list from the bank that says what he's been paid for and he did not pay for all of it. Um, it says on our electrical on the bank, he's only owed $300. That is on the contract. He's owed $300 yet. We owe, he owes the electrician $15,000. Um, there's other things that he's been overpaid for. He said that he was putting in eight jacks and two long beams under the house to support the main living area. They're under, after inspection with our engineer, there are only six in one beam and he got paid 100% for that. He also got paid for five doors that we personally had to pay for because he had run out of money. We have personally paid the plumber $8,550. Our bank came to us in January, said they were going to default on us because the contractor had not finished the job in the allotted time. And so we became in a panic. So we paid for lots of things ourselves. We paid for almost every electrical fixture in there. Um, some of the stuff he's been paid for in full. So at this point, he has been overpaid, and especially with the damages. It cost me $1,900 to get the trusses fixed. Um, we had to redo the front step that didn't meet code. He didn't have handrails on the porch. The windows do not meet egress requirements and have to be replaced. The bathroom was leaking and is still a mess. I still do not have a master bathroom. He put one of the doors on backwards according to the plans and had to be reversed. And when we went through at this point, he owes us money. We don't owe him any money at this point, and he and our our subcontractors need to be paid. And I really think, and that's really all I need to say with it. What yeah. we said last time. Quick question: Did the bank send out an inspector before the draws? Yes. Um, it failed. The last one failed miserably. Um, the bank inspector. Uh, yes. Okay. It, it failed miserably, um, the, and then like he got paid for paint, and we don't, none of our barn doors are painted. And our, all of our interior doors, the tops and bottoms aren't painted, and it says void if not sealed, so they're not even done properly, and it got paid for all the interior paint as well. Um, but, yeah, it had, was inspected, and, it, and even the bank told us sometimes they paid him for things he didn't do, and I have that in writing as well. <laughs> nice now. <laughs> Thank you. Any further? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Are there any liens on the house right now? There are not. Just threats. <laughs> did you get noticed? I did. We got. We did get a notice from the electrician. And I think. Notice owners. I think maybe from Mike. I'm not sure on that one. I do know for sure from I did from the electrician. Okay. Thank you. Any further? All right. Thank you. Board, if I could just correct uh, where we were discussing the alleged violations. Um, I misspoke. I would, I would ask that we remove code section 1837D9D, the contracting beyond the scope. Um, what, in it, and I think it falls under the mismanagement or misconduct, maybe. Um, there was several items that uh, the building official noted on his courtesy inspection that was not included in the building permits. It was not in the scope of work, so he failed to revise that scope. So it was outside of the scope of work that he provided, not outside the scope of his license. So that was just a, a miss. Okay. There was no permit required for that outside the scope of work that was done that was within the scope of 
That is correct. Permitting was required for the items that he did that were not within the original permit. Is that concerning the windows that are not meeting egress? Yes. Um, do you so want to show Mr. Tolbert's report? That's the safety hazard that was created, right? As you yes. can see on your screen, uh, right. Mr. Tolbert's report is, is up there on the screen and he addresses that. Mr. Prouty, it's your opportunity to address the board. If you could please state your name and address for the record. Michael Prouty, 6797 Data Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32504. Uh, I can work backwards. I provide a spreadsheet of all the costs. So when they say that they don't owe me the $60,000, they're living in a house that has not had a final inspection since February. Um, their barn doors were pre-finished. I've showed them those pre-finished. I was not supposed to be installing any appliances, as you can see on the contract that was provided. I told them over and over and over again their, their plans call for a downdraft range. Well, she didn't like any downdraft range I sent, even though it's not my position to send to them. We have to have this hood that goes up in the thing. I said, well, we're going to have to cut the truss. They provide the plans. They provide the engineering. Whenever I was installing it, they didn't find it necessary to provide the engineering for me to cut the trusses. But soon as uh, they decided, as soon as I said, I'm not going to do any more work on the project until I get paid for everything you agreed upon to pay extra, then all of a sudden it becomes an issue. And they did finally call their engineer and did finally get the engineering for it. So. I provide the contract, which was a fixed scope, exactly what items I was going to do. I am definitely 100%. My oversight did not include the siding or the windows, but I did install, I did say that I'm building a three car garage, which had the siding and doors on it. I didn't list those either. It was an oversight, 100% guilty of that. But that does not give them right not to pay $60,000. <laughs> I have a question, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Mr. Pratt, how long have you been in business? I've had my license since 04. Um, cutting a truss. I know, like I said, I told them it needed engineering. I've been a framer since I was 16. Uh, okay, so you're, you're further to my point. <laughs> yeah, and I told them we needed engineering, um, and they, they were responsible for the engineering. They hired the engineer. So did they give you a paper that said? No, they refused to. So then why did you cut it? To try to get the job done. I, 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 I'm just telling you as. I, so I, so I stopped the job and that's why I'm here. Some of these men up here are hands on and knows. I know, the first flag that came to me and I think you can relate that is I have not fixed a cut, no trust until I get an engineered piece of paper that tells me where to cut, what to splice. We have a building uh, uh, inspector here that can tell us that you, you just don't, you don't touch it. And you know, this is a major structural component. You don't do a job without getting paid either. And look what happens when I'm here for stopping. Mr. Pride, this ain't got nothing to do with getting paid. This, this is, to me. <laughs> this, this has to do with competency. Mm -hmm. We're a competency board mm -hmm. as a contractor. Mm -hmm. I move this go to disciplinary hearing, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Motion made, is there a second? Second that. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? I just need clarification on that motion. Is that to proceed to disciplinary with the <clears throat> alleged violations cited yes. minus the one we removed yes. earlier? Yes. Thank you. I, I do have a question. What about the contractors that haven't been paid? The subs, why haven't they been the money paid? that I'll pay the contractors. There's only three. But it sounds like you were previously paid already by the bank. I've sent in the copy of the draws and never said what the items were that I was being paid for. It said draw one, draw two, draw three. It never listed the items. Any further questions? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing. Uh, based on the alleged allegations, minus uh, 1837D9D is approved. Thank you. 
Our next item is also Michael E. Prouty Jr. doing business as Tecton Building Group. Incorporated State Certified License Number CGC 1510335, Contractor Competency Board, Complaint Number 230663COM. It's in regard to Robert and Kim Levro doing business as RK Plumbing LLC. The complainants at the location 428 Orby Drive, Pence County, Florida 32534. Proper notice again was sent to the respondent. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Levro, are y'all present? I do not believe that they are present. Mr. Prouty, again, is present. Mr. Prouty, are you going to provide testimony in regard to this hearing? Yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Chair, if you'll just uh, advise Mr. Prouty that he is still under oath from the previous hearing. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anyone else in the audience that's going to provide testimony for this hearing? All right. Um, and again, Mr. Prouty, you were previously sworn. Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Um, Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was June 7th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. Uh, were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? I was. Uh, did the complainant provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He he issued a, a statement. And were you able to communicate with the respondent, and did they provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda? They did, and it is attached. Uh, my understanding, this didn't really involve Mr. Prouty and permitting for him. This is actually the subcontractor for the previous case that has now filed a complaint against Mr. Prouty, correct? That is correct. Staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. Move approval. Second. Motion made and seconded in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move all documentation documentation presented into evidence is approved. <coughs> Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to this case? And if so, please state your justification. Code section 1837 D8. Um, as mentioned, this does relate to um, Mr. Prouty hiring the Leveralts uh, plumbing company to do work at the previous case. <coughs> Um, they are still owed a balance from that work. Mr. Prouty, would you like to address the board in regard to the case? Mr. Chairman, I got a question before you okay. start. Uh, so this is a subcontractor filing a complaint against the contractor. So procedural wise, so do we entertain subcontractors complaints against contractors I just want to kind of establish we actually entertain any and all complaints against a license it does not have to be the actual property owner mm -hmm. it can it can be just any contractor it can be it can be yes okay and also read on the the report that uh, it went to civil and that uh, it was alleged in civil that the contract hasn't been paid, so therefore, the subcontractor hasn't been paid. That, that correct? That's correct. There, okay. there is currently an open civil okay. case, and it's from the previously heard case that we just talked about, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Michael Prouty, <laughs> six seven nine seven Data Street, Pensacola, Florida three two five zero four. That's true. I owe the money. I just haven't been paid for it, so I can't pay them. I've paid them everything I can. So I'm still owed 20% from the job, and they're only owed 10%. As soon as I get paid, they'll be paid. If I have funds before then, I'll pay them because they're a rather small amount, but I can't come up with to pay everybody. So. Any other questions? Being none, thank you. Thank you.
case is dependent on the previous one. I would go ahead and entertain a motion uh, just like we did on the first case uh, for this case also because unfortunately it's a trickle effect. Yeah. And, uh, I was going to suggest we just uh, delay this until the other case is resolved which this is related to. Correct. We can't make a well, decision. Well, make the same motion that we take it to disciplinary. So I make a motion to move it to disciplinary. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, motion to move to disciplinary hearing is approved. All right, thank you, sir. Our next item is Wade Hunter doing business as Lee Hunter Construction, LLC. State registered license number RR2828121171. Contractor competency board complaint number 230555COM. It's in regard to Jonathan and Samantha Kendrick, homeowner complainants at 1620 East Lee Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. The Kendricks are joining us via Microsoft Teams. Uh, Mr. David, do you have them? I'm here. Thank you. And Mr. Kendrick, are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Yeah, if needed. Um, I said really going to let um, the board. I haven't really heard Melissa's or her findings. I was going to kind of sit back and see what y'all needed. Yes, sir. And Mr. Hunter, are you present today? Yes. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing? Yes. At this time, I would like to have Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Hunter sworn in. I do. Thank you. Ms. Reber was previously sworn. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board and on what date was it filed? Yes, it was May 5th, 2023. And were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Yes, I was. Did the complainant provide any supporting documentation and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, they did, and it is attached. And did the respondent provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did, and yes, it is attached. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? I will note that this property is in the city, um, so this information was provided to me by the city. Um, a review of the permitting history for 1620 East Lee Street reveals an interior remodel permit issued on September 22nd, 2022 with a April, excuse me, with an April 3rd, 23 failed framing inspection. A permit was issued for an addition in a bathroom issued on December 22nd. 2022 with the slab inspection passing on February 14th, 23. Staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion <coughs> to move all documentation into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Um, possibly code section 1837D9H. Um, I state possibly uh, simply because the when the inspection, the framing inspection failed, um, Mr. Hunter was subsequently terminated after that. Um, 
I'm, I'm not sure of the opportunity to cure that or or not. In there, you state failure to supervise construction activities. What does that relate to? Um, it it was alleged by uh, Mr. Kendrick that the slab was not poured correctly. Um, I could not find where the plumber called for an inspection. Uh, the city building official did submit information, basically stating he, he couldn't determine um, without going to the site if the slab was incorrect or not. It did pass inspection. There were some notes in there that the new contractor has met with the building office and it, it basically says contractor assist. Uh, they're gonna assist them and in, in getting the slab corrected and moving forward. But again, I never saw where the plumber even called, I mean, I'm sorry, where it was ever documented with the city and, and nor did the building official state that it was wrong. But the permit did pass inspection. I mean, the slab did pass inspection. The slab, yes, sir, it did on April 14th of 23. Mr. Kendrick? Yep, I'm here. It's your opportunity to address the board in regard to this case? Yeah, I mean, this is a weird case. I mean, the addition in itself was drawn up and passed to the council to be a certain size and it's completely not what was built. Um, the framing is not even connected to the old structure itself. A lot of the framing is not done correctly, so we're spending a lot of money just to reframe right now. Uh, I mean, I'm confused how slab inspection passed before you could get the rough-end plumbing passed, so I don't know how concrete's allowed to be poured without having that done. And then if someone were to go walk this property, you would see you know, holes in this concrete slab that were done because they they stuck our pipes in the wrong spots, right? So whatever plans they had, which I'm, I'm sure matched the original intent of the structure, is not what was actually built. Therefore, when they decided to start popping their drain lines and sewer lines and whatnot, they're just totally in the wrong spot, right? So you walk this property, you're gonna see like uh, a sewer pipe right in the middle of the doorway. And you're gonna be like, why? So that was one one piece. The piece where they failed the inspection uh, for the framing was they, they notched out the bottom, I'm gonna use the wrong language here, so sorry, like what, what's the bottom boards that runs? Floor joists? So uh, the floor joists were notched out. So the, the whatever inspector went out there did not pass it for that reason. And they had told Lee Hunter to hear that, he did not. He told me it was cured. It was not. Uh, you know, we have text messages, you know, saying that, you know, inspector, like, I know someone that will, will pass this. And lo and behold, um, he, 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 gets, he gets the person to pass it. So, you know, we saw pictures of the notched out floor choice there that, you know, basically he did because he was trying to make his sewer plumbing run at a certain angle, right? So, but even me as a non-construction person would know not to go messing with my you know, weight supports. Um, that's what started the chain of events of terminating, you know, him because we just didn't think he was on there properly supervising projects. Um, it just so happens that my new contractor lives catty corner to the property. He was letting me know kind of things that were happening as we were in town the weekend that we were trying to meet with Lee Hunter. Um, basically, you know, let's say we had 10 permits open. One of them was passed. Uh, like, I think it was the, the slab Everything else is not passed. Windows, framing, everything, right? Like nothing is ready to be passed. Well, Lee Hunter's trying to bring in, you know, hundreds of sheets of, of drywall into this property. And the only reason I know this is because my new contractor is calling me up and telling me this. So I'm like, well, I don't see how we're going to bring in all this sheetrock and it's going to get damaged. And I'm sure the inspectors don't want all this sheetrock on property because they're going to have to inspect as well. And they're going to tell us to remove it, right? So... I don't know. It's really just this comical set of, of errors. Um, I, I also used a a third party kind of a I don't know engineering or firm that was kind of supposed to be there to oversee things, and they were releasing payments. And you know, windows get paid for eleven thousand dollars worth of windows, but I only have 
you know, 10 windows. You know, so I don't know where the rest of the windows are. I also know that my contractor, who lives Patty Corner, saw Lee Hunter removing some sort of return air system outside of the back garage, you know, into his truck the day or so he was terminated. So I have no idea what sort of stuff we're going to hear from Lee Hunter here, but I'm just letting you know that I have a unique... I have a unique perspective in the sense that my new contractor happens to live right across the streets. And that is all I got. Um, I'm not sure since um, the city building official is here, if you'd like to, yeah, I understand he submitted a report if the board, you know, wants to look at that for their perspective. And again, that was my only concern when that framing failed. Um, Mr. Hunter was fired on April 28th, a um, couple of weeks after that, that failing. Um, While Melissa is looking for that, uh, Mr. Hunter, if you'd like to come forward and address the board in regard to the case. Wade Hunter, uh, 9927 Oak Haven Road, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Uh, the only inspection that was failed was the uh, the pre pour the footer was supposed to be number five rebar builders fresh source who I ordered the foundation material sent number four it was caught inspector said fix it we fixed it we went ahead and forth um, what he's talking about as a floor joist being notched out I built an addition on a stem wall I didn't cut any any trusses at all any floor joists at all what happened was when the plumber was doing his roughing of the house when he drilled down for a drain line he ran into a joist it was scabbed back together and it was it didn't even drill all the way through it kind of just notched the top of it out it was seen and it was fixed um we we did we rewired the main structure after it was gutted we put new central heat and air in we replumbed it as well as addition we got as far as putting the new windows in we insulated the structure i had the drywall on site and then he texted didn't even call he texted and said please remove your stuff we no longer want your services so we removed our stuff um, as far as I've got calls. as far as I've me, got calls. as far as me being seen, um, rem I never removed anything off of the job site after I was fired. I didn't even go back to the job site. Um, this was a I paid out of pocket for everything from the start. Um, he had a banking system that we used that I had to take pictures of every task that was done, send it to his banker. His banker would review it and then you know would release funds. The funds got released to Jonathan. Jonathan released funds to me. I paid everything out of pocket, and then I got reimbursed. I never took any money up front. It was all out of my pocket. Yes. Mr. Chair. Yeah. I, I heard him say things like you had brought sheetrock into the house on that's a normal procedure yes sir to bring in sheetrock uh, yes sir I during the course because you're fixing to use it is that what you were doing yes sir yeah, staging yes, sir. for the next stage yeah, installation was already in the walls i've sent pictures so the room. installation was already in the walls yes, that's sir. what i was so the sheetrock being walls. there was not an out of character not out of there at all no, thing sir. to happen at not that at point um this thing about the Slab being busted up. You said something about a floor joist. They said something about a slab. Being yeah, so busted. I built the addition on a stem wall. It was concrete slab. What he's referring to is in the kitchen where we're replumbing the main structure with an off grade house. When the plumber drilled down for his drain line, it, it hit a floor joist. Okay, we don't know what, you know, we're just drilling. But it didn't, it's not like we didn't drill straight through it and just leave it hanging. It just notched the top out. I mean, it was, you know. That's standard procedure. But so we're, I thought I heard him say that a slab was busted out. So the plumber missed in the addition. 
there were some plumbing pipes missed, but just like in on, on any other construction, when you do a plumbing pipe, you have to jackhammer the slab and move it. So that that's happens. what they were doing. That's, that is a common occurrence. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have that right now. <laughs> that is a common occurrence. So I just want to make that clear yes, of sir. those items. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, how do we answer the fact that what was approved to be built is not at all with the structure that was built, like dimension-wise? So what happened was... At all. So what happened was there was an addition, there was already like a back porch on the, the on the house, and when my engineer drew it up, he drew it up as that porch was staying. So the measurements did get off because that porch was no longer there. So yes, the measurements did get off. I, I agree to that. But nobody caught. I didn't catch it. No inspector caught. Like nobody seen that. How far off? Are we talking like two or three feet or? No, it's like eight feet. Eight feet. Eight feet deep. Yeah, eight foot long. So it should have been eight foot longer than what it is? No, no, it's built to what I quoted him for, but the plans are eight foot shorter than what I built, essentially. So you, well, you built, more than built more than the plan showed? Yes, sir. I built bigger than what the plan showed. No. No, that, that, that's wrong. That's wrong. Hold up, hold up. That, you're not sworn in, so it's just me talking. That's not. It's not what's approved by the city, right? Like whenever he goes to get the permits, right? I'm I'm literally talking about what the city approves. Like forget what he's saying happened between me and him. I'm saying the city and engineer drawings went to get approved. It is not at all what is on that property. It it got built lower. It got built less, not more, less. It's built, it's built bigger than what the plans show. I, I, I yeah. it's built bigger than what the plans show. Then the plans that I have, the addition that is built out there is bigger than what the plan said. Yeah. It's not the case. I mean, it's what was submitted to the city for the permits. I mean, it's, it's, I assume that, I assume that's part of the, the, the evidence that we have in front of us, right? I mean, I'm, I'm driving, so I can't, can't look. Ms. Reber, do we have? Yeah. So I would like to draw your attention to the screen. Um, here is a, a report provided by Jonathan Bilby um, from the city of Pensacola. He is uh, the building official there. He states, good afternoon, Melissa. There are two permits for the address that were originally obtained by Lee Hunter Construction. Alteration permit 22-09-7369. Project summary is provided and attached. This project included the windows However, number of windows not specified, roofing, electrical, and mechanical. Plumbing permit not obtained yet. The addition, we passed the slab and footings, but it looks like the contractor failed to have a plumbing rough-in inspection. As far as addition size, I cannot say without going to the site. I have provided a summary report for you on this project as well. So I have on your screen now the two summary reports. Um, as you can see, this one um, where Melissa was talking about the contractor assist, that's when they do an inspection to assist um, with corrections. Um, and this is where they met with the new contractor and they gave a partial pass saying another plumbing contractor will correct all mistakes and finish the work. Um, you can see the history there at the bottom of the screen of the inspections. And then the other one is um, here as well. Um, you can see the framing inspection failed, needs plumbing and mechanical inspections, need engineer floor joist repair, remove insulation, and make sure all holes and plates are sealed, list not complete. Um, so that's the reports that Melissa was talking about earlier. That, that was my mistake. That was not supposed to be frame and inspection called in. That was supposed to be just the nailing and strapping to check the strapping of the addition. Going back to the addition size, um, obviously we have a complete discrepancy between the owner and the contractor of eight feet. What, what do we have to document exactly what that is? And is that in fact something that is failure to supervise construction activities? I don't, I don't know that that 
qualifies. So for us to confirm if what was put on site was in accordance with the approved plans, that would be up to the city of Pensacola and the building official to provide that documentation and confirmation to us. Um, I believe um, the reason that failure to supervise construction activities was cited was there was an approved set of plans and yet what was built on site was not in accordance with the approved set of plans, which was done by Mr. Hunter's employees. Um, so that's where that was cited. And uh, uh, there was some um, talk or uh, communication from the property owners that uh, Mr. Hunter was not on site for at different instances. Um, Mr. Hunter made a statement that there's a GPS system that requires him to be within a certain parameter for him to obtain draws, et cetera. So that's the communications on both sides of, uh, that was alleged that he was never on site. Yeah, so the, the banking system that was used had a GPS tracking system to where the first time I, I never used the system, so I went to the job and I took the pictures, and then when I got back to my office, when I went to upload the pictures for a draw, it said you have to be on site to do your draw. So that you know, I was every time I submitted a draw that the bank, you know, the bank approved every time all the pictures, um, I had to be on site. I've never heard of that, Mr. Chair. Um, Either. That's, no, don't say it don't exist, but I've never heard of it. You gotta be. It exists. It's identified as calling an AES system, and um, I did speak with the Kendricks about that on a call. And Mr. Kendrick, correct me if I'm wrong, you confirm that there is GPS? Yeah, there's GPS. And really, like, my, my issue here is not did he end up on a property A, B, or C days, right? I mean, I'm assuming he's on a property on A, B, or C day. It's like, I have a bigger issue with like how it was supervised in general. So like my question mark today is not geographical in nature, it's like competence in nature. But yes, they had a system because AES is a Louisiana firm and they didn't necessarily come out to do the physical inspection themselves. They wanted to know that someone took the pictures physically and had that you know, photo date imprint GPS to be able to prove it. Now, I'm not happy with the, you know, there's that. Um, if I may, my, my only concern in, in coming up with this failure to supervise, um, once that inspection was failed, um, it's my understanding that, you know, the contractor can correct that if it was going to be out of his pocket or however that was. But unfortunately, I, I guess the working relationship had broke down and within, you know, a couple of weeks, Mr. Hunter was terminated and didn't have the opportunity. That, that was going to be my yeah. question. Was Whether he it given was the costing him or was not. Was he given the opportunity okay. to fix? But I have phone records, so I don't know why he came up here today saying we didn't call, okay? So we have multiple, multiple phone calls that we try to get in touch with them. And therefore, it had to be done termination via text because this person does not want to answer their phone, right? So there was efforts done, and he was simply avoiding us. So the effort was made. I mean, there and I, you know, gave Melissa, you know, Melissa, all these documents of all the text messages trying to get answers on things. So like, there were there were opportunities to cure. Um. And I'll just add those talk, those text communication are in there. Um, there was also communication that there was a period of time that Mr. Hunter's wife was hospitalized and subsequently had a surgery. They, you know, deeply discussed that. Um, I, I don't, I'm not sure when the communication stopped, but the text messages basically go um, through, you know, including small talk and, you know, I don't, I don't see much of a breakdown until right here at the end. And again, I just, that's my thought that there needed to be a p opportunity to correct. 
months. Bigger. I mean, that, with that project started in what July or August? I mean, what is it, September? I mean, we're talking months here. I mean, I'm not not sitting back here trying to just like you know twiddle my thumbs here. So small talk, yes, but I'm trying to figure out how to get the project going. So, I mean, you're talking. He's just super super late in his you know delivery. What concerns me is that uh, what was built was not what was designed. Correct. That's right, what was on the plans. And unfortunately, we have no confirmation of that from Mr. Bilby, uh, the this, this city of Pensacola building official. He says he, in his report, that he cannot confirm that. Um, now, if you would like confirmation of that, we can request that from the city. I would think that would be the prudent thing to do is to get confirmation as to that statement that it was not built to plans. We've not seen it. We've no, we have no way of knowing. Uh, I entertain a motion to delay and request uh, the city to provide that information. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to delay until we get the information from Mr. Bilby on that specific question of building something that was not in the plans. Thank you. Our next item is Christopher W. Brown doing business as Shooting Stars Construction, LLC, State Registered License Number RG00193314, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230557COM. It's in regard to Vin Cow, homeowner complainant at 3709 Idlewood Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32505. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Vin Cow, are you present today? Thank you. And are you going to provide testimony? Thank you. Mr. Brown, are you present today? Thank you, Mr. Perez. And are you going to provide testimony for this hearing today? Mr. Perez, if you could come to the podium, please, and state your request to the board. Does he need to be sworn in? If he's, I think, okay. just making a request. Now, please okay. only make your request. Don't right. don't go into the details of the case. Uh, the request is the, um, Mr. Brown is not present, so we are uh, asking him for continues because we hire a lawyer, and uh, we need to have more time. We have a request. Entertain a motion to approve. I think we need to hear from the. Mr. Mr. Vin, can you please come forward and and address the board only in regard to Mr. your opinion on the request for continuance? Yes, my name is Vin Cow. I'm the objection. I'm objection with the continuance because the case already uh, my house be already two and a half years, and it's too long, and I have all the evidence that thing is not done correctly. Okay, we've heard from both. I understand the basis of some kind of a legal thing, Mr. Perez, but what yes. does that have to do with the details of this? Um, it does have, uh, actually have uh, anything to do with the details, only the, we need to hire a lawyer, because he did hire a lawyer, and we are, have uh, some discrepancy on, on the situation. Is that uh, like a civil case, though? It's going to be a civil case and, uh, in the future. So I don't think that has anything to do with this. Uh, I'd like to move forward with the yeah, case. Let's move and forward. Here, as far as I'm concerned, that's my motion. Motion to deny the request of delay. Second. 
We have a second. motion and a second. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to deny the request for delay is approved. So, Mr. Perez, they are going to proceed with the hearing. Are you going to provide testimony in regard to the case? Yes, I will. Okay. Mr. Cowell and Mr. Perez, if you could both be sworn in. Ms. Reaper, who was previously sworn, uh, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? There was May 5th, 2023. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? I was. Did the complainant provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? Yes, he did, and it is attached. Did the respondent provide supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? He did. Were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? A permit for a new single family dwelling was issued to Mr. Brown on April 23rd, 2021 with a past framing inspection on 2-13-2023. A roof permit was also issued to Mr. Brown on April 23rd, 2021. No inspections were ever conducted. Um, Mr. Um, Cow terminated Mr. Brown uh, effective July 7th, therefore uh, had his permits terminated as well. Staff requests at this time that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. Motion. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to move all documentation presented into evidence is approved. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each violation and your justification. Code section 1837D8. Um, this, uh, the parties entered into a contract uh, back in November of 2020 um, with an estimated completion of 120 to 150 days. Um, the project is still not complete. The um, cows have a mortgage on this that they're still having to pay interest and um, on that. Code section 1837 D9H, um, again, the this project, um, since it's taken so long, there's been a lot of um, complaints against vendors, uh, the work getting done appropriately, having to be redone. There were windows installed, allegedly not the correct windows. Those windows are gonna have to be removed. Um, the property sat without a front door um, for a very long time, I last my last inspection, it still was not installed. Um, and then it's my understanding when it was installed, it was installed incorrectly. Um, a, a lot of issues I think were mainly down to many, many cosmetic issues. But there's been quite a few problems along the way. This is your opportunity to address the board in regard to the case. If you could please state your name and address for the record. Good morning. My name is Vinny Cow. I'm living at 1734 Cedar Lane in Pensacola, Florida, 32514. And I would like to say thank you for listening to me. Um, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm filing complaint because the contractor from Tony Perez that the, uh, he said that he's the general contractor and what I found out that Chris, Crystal Proud is really the gentleman that we pay him 
to do the money to work for my house. And for two and a half years, he promised me all the work had to be done. For example, I'm not complaining about the framing and stuff, but the windows, the side door, the installation, everything else. I have to personally come down to air almost every single day to do supervisor. I never see Tony or Christopher around there to do the work. I see all the people do the work. Then I sent a letter to Christopher Brown to ask, let's give me the list of licensed people working in my house. He never did. I'm asking him where the money goes. He never tell me why. I'm asking him, Tony told me where to go get the windows, the door. We submitted in for him. He never gave me where, the, where he ordered the window from. Two and a half years now, you didn't see my house, the side of the bedroom, we don't have the windows. The front of the house, we don't have the windows. The front door, we don't have it. When he ordered it in, I asked him where did it come from. He told me somewhere he doesn't know. I asked him, can you give me the, the price list, the punch list that where you ordered from? He didn't give it to me. When he ordered it, he said, I asked him, that's wrong. We agree with something else. He said, he changed the glass. How can you change the glass of side, two side window are completely different? You have to take it out one side, replace it with another one. And I asked Mr. Uh, Melissa, come and help me out. <coughs> Even Melissa pointed out to him, he doesn't understand it. It's wrong. So all I'm asking the board is very, very simple. Just allow me to terminate him and to allow me to hire the other contractor to come in so I can go to civil lawsuit so I can get the money back. And that's all I need to I'm asking for help. So you're just asking for us to allow you to terminate the contract? Yes, and to, because he just wanted to delay the work that he never done and the house that I'm living in, I'm concerned. They do whatever, I need the board to help me out. That, yeah. That's what I'm looking for. I, I don't understand what is. Yeah, just asking staff. Um, with, with Mr. Cow, you have effectively yeah. uh, terminated him. It's, it's been a little difficult for Mr. Cow to quite understand our process. Of course, he's focused mainly on the home. Um, he did send that certified letter and submit that to us, so you have effectively terminated him. Um, I have spoken with a new contractor that he anticipates hiring who's now going through everything to see how he can possibly pick the project up. So there's really no action for us to do based on, you've already got your contract terminated, yeah, is all you wanted for, from today. Yes. So if that's completed, are we finished with this until? Um, that's, that's up to the board. Um, I mean, I, I worked this case with the evidence that I had and, and what I felt there could be probable cause for. Um, really until this morning, I didn't understand that he didn't realize that it was terminated and he was free to move forward. Um, I thought we were still going to move forward and, and look at the case on its merits. We've got a job that's uh, been started but hadn't been completed and monies have been exchanged and uh, I th the uh, alleged violations seem to be proper to me. <coughs> the contractor hasn't performed his contract. <coughs> Mr. Perez is also here if you'd like to hear from him. May I say one more thing? I did give him the second <coughs> chance. And I did approve, I did send it a letter to Melissa, the second chance that the 75 days later, after two years, and he's still not performance. I just <coughs> want to make a note. Thank you, Thank Ms. You. Cal. Mr. Perez, if you could please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. My name is Pedro Antonio Perez. I'm representing uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, we started the house when COVID hits, and uh, we had a very difficult time through the whole six to seven months to find material and people to work. And when finally we started the house, um, 
we didn't have uh, enough uh, provision from the bank in order to start working completely. So uh, I asked him if he, we, oh, we needed to do, do the trusses and no trust company was able to provide the trusses at the moment. So I asked Mr. Cow if we can stick frame it, I would ask for it and say, so go ahead. We spent over twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars with the material to stick frame it, and um, three months later he came back and says, "No, I don't like it. I don't want it. We have to redo all the take all the trusses that we stick frame out, and order it for three months. Order the, the the regular trusses. When the trusses were done, the truck delivered, and the truck got stuck in the mud because this property." It's next to the river, and it was full of mud. I've, it's been one thing after the other. They're not satisfied with windows. They're not satisfied with doors. They're not satisfied with bricks. They're not satisfied with anything. Uh, they including the. We have been in business for many years, and this is the first time we have this situation. Even though they, they picked up all the uh, material that was needed for the bathroom and for the uh, inside of the house. And after this was installed, they come back and say, I don't like it, I don't want it, I want you to take it out. And this has been ongoing for the last six to seven to eight months. The one thing is good, the other thing is not good. Then uh, they, uh, I hear they don't like this electrical work, they don't like this uh, light, they don't like this, they don't like that. And we have to re redo it again. And it's very hard to satisfy somebody that doesn't want anything that you do for it. And this is the first time in 23 years that we have this problem. Maybe it's, it's a misunderstanding, miscommunication, or maybe that we don't have uh, the same uh, understanding. They want everything from the picture of the d designer, which is uh, windows with lights on the, on the top of it. And I told them that they did not pay them that type of windows because uh, they were constructing 4,225 square footage of, of, of house, and they only pay $96 a square footage. They don't understand that the money doesn't uh, apply to the commodity of they want. And the bank is only providing $415,000 for the whole con construction. And it's impossible for you to use that money and give them the opportunity of the person to have quality or real fine quality of designing. And so far, we have no understanding in that part. So they he end up, um, really everything happened is just cosmetic and also a misunderstanding. And he terminated us without even let us know. We still got tools, we still got uh, material that we bought and we still got things in there, which I got a letter that I gave them to the um, investigator, and I would like to hand them one with a certified uh, letter on for them to allow us to come back and pick up our tools and our material. Pick up our tools and material. material. Okay. And equipment that we have there. I, she got a letter, and I have one to hand deliver them. To them. To them, yes. yes. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, what do we do? I have a couple of questions. Where are we at right now? So is the, are the permits out there on this job? No. The permits have actually been deemed contract terminated. Those are still open permits because Mr. Brown has not uh, canceled re those permits. They're they're just deemed contract terminated because the homeowner provided the proper documentation for us to change the status for him to have the ability of, to obtain a new contractor with new permitting. Now, how big is this house? Square footage wise? Would you mind pulling the pictures? Four thousand two hundred twenty-five. Four thousand. He said 4,225 uh, square feet. And it's been in construction how long? Well, Ten. so th their contract was in 2020, <coughs> um, but the permitting, according to the 
investigation report was started April 2021, um, and now we're into 23. And the complainant is staying in that house right now, resides in that house currently. The property owner are yeah. they are they within the home? No, they're they're not. I've got um, some current pictures that can show you the that status of the home. On your screen, you'll see the, the current inspection photos that were provided by the investigator. That's in this current stage right now? Um, as of my last inspection, um, I think Mr. Cow said they, maybe the day, day before they tried to terminate him, um, they came out and attempted to install a door, but I, I will have to defer to him. He might have said it wasn't installed correctly or it might is, not have been the correct door. And this is a new construction? This is brand new, new brand, ground up? brand new home. And um, these are some pictures that uh, the day, the, the last day that I was out there. Um, again, a lot of this is cosmetic, but uh, a lot of things were installed before the windows and doors. And uh, that's not cosmetic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the issue with the windows, um, Mr. Brown states that he intended on, on the ones that were in place, some, some are still not in, he intended just to change the glass out in them. Um, I wasn't sure how that would impact. How much money has been paid towards this contract versus the total amount to date? Mr. Um, Cal, if you could come yeah. to before to the board. Thank you, the board. Uh, may I encounter uh, answer your question for the, it's about three hundred and thirty seven thousand dollars, sorry. Three hundred and thirty seven thousand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that uh, three hundred thousand three hundred seven thousand did come from the bank with thirty thousand dollars from my own pocket in the cash in 2022 because he said that the bank would draw so slow, so I gave him the cash so you know, to keep the house moving, but actually it was my mistake because when the money he got it, never see it. But I want, well, what I want to mention the encounter, what Tony said, Mr. Perez said to you about the, the, the money, the cost and the instruction, it's not the point. The point is the house, you accept the, the contract, then you need to tell me that how long you're gonna be finished and we'll see that 150 days. Then a year and a half later, I give him another 75 days in writing, and it's still not been done. So that is the point I make to the board. It's nothing about the material. If, if I, I have a business too. I sell the bowl of soup only $9, $10. Every time come, you come into the door, I greet you, and make sure that you're happy with my food. This how it's 400 something thousand dollars. He told me that the window needs to be replaced the glass. This is a new home construction. Somebody come into the house, install. He installed the wrong window. He didn't even know it. I have to come in there and supervise. That's all the counter I help. It, it's, it's the, and then, then the last time I terminated, before I terminate the letter, I told him, I'm gonna send you the letter, do the termination. I asked him, when can you finish my home? He said, he, he doesn't know when he can finish my house. This is only a few days ago, five days ago. Mr. Chair, I have a yeah. question. Why did the glass have to be replaced? Because it's not the, the window that we, we agree with in the plan, in the, the drawing. And then he said that- the So the glass is not the proper type of glass? That's correct. And then also that it's not just that, the front window, I don't know if you have a picture of that, the front window and the out of the house is supposed to be identical the way it's supposed to be. Windows. Mr. Brown told me that, no, no, I can change the glass. And then if I don't know how to see that, you have the front. Yeah, it, she's going to the okay. first picture. Yeah, go back to the front. If I didn't make my point. 
My point is the incompetency of the general contractor is not there every day to tell people what to do, but I have to do it. I learned everything about from the house now. When I um, questioned, you know, Mr. Brown was saying, I don't understand what you're saying is wrong with those windows. And I said, I wouldn't notice it unless it was pointed out. But I showed him the bottom to the right and that, and I said, you're telling me you can change the glass out? Because I don't know. And he goes, oh, now I see it. He goes, no, I have to change that yeah, whole right. window out. And, Those are not um, the same windows. Right. But then we both looked at each other, and he goes, now that's all I can see. This is the contractor. But I think what Mr. Cow is trying to say is uh, he alleges that he provided the correct doors, I mean, everything that was supposed to be ordered, and he's saying he didn't get any of that. Um, his bedroom door should have been um, French doors. He put in a sliding glass door. And so when I asked Mr. Brown about that, he said, yeah, that's right, but they agreed that it was okay. And yeah. Mr. Cow, I mean, he can testify, but he I'm said he was afraid to say change it because then they'd say more delays. I have another question, Mr. Chair. At this point, do we know how, okay, the contract is being terminated, so that's a done deal. Do we know how much money it's going to cost to bring this up and finish versus how much money is left in there? Is this, where is this going to lay out at? Yes. That will help us to understand any mis financial mis. I believe, sir, are you the new contractor? I'm looking and I'm following If you would like to come and address the board, yes, you would need to be sworn in. Come on up, sir. State your name and address for the record and be sworn. He was asking about the money. We're crunching numbers. I was there this morning. I'm getting all the brick guys there. I'm getting all my mechanical guys there. We're trying to figure it out. As it looks right now, I still got about three or four more things to do. We're looking at about 250000 to finish because I have to pull all the windows out. What it is is he's put multiple windows in. You've got four to five different brand windows, so they don't match. You can't fix them. you got to pull them out. So where the brick is, we've got to tear all the brick out around the windows. We've got to pull the windows out. That's not an easy process. Then we got to get them in, replash them, and get it all put back together. The showers, what's wrong with the showers is not so much the tile picked out. You know, you got the center bands in there, as you saw. They're horrible. They're horrible. I can't just take those out because I'm going to break the waterproof and membrane. So I have to tear the whole shower out. Otherwise, it won't be waterproof. So, I mean, oh, what's left? a lot of stuff he's going to have to live with. He knows. But the main reason we came here today, I came because we thought we were running the process of just canceling the contract so he's happy with that it's done i'm here just trying to figure out everything before i get involved in this can i ask one more question this is just for reference point mm -hmm. is it four thousand something square feet of no that's, that's combined garages porches and everything it's about three thousand condition three thousand living condition living condition and the contract was for four hundred thousand that's what they did they 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 just priced it wrong I, and they're in a bind i can't understand <laughs> Well, so fortunately, what happens at times like this is contractors out there, they take the job and they do exactly what's happening now is that they go back for money. money but now, money, like money. I said, I haven't, we got to get with them and now we, we got to make sure we, we got to finish right. this house. It's been two and a half years. This is about a yeah, 10 month you. house, 10 month job. So any other questions? Thank you, sir. All right, y'all. Appreciate it. Uh, entertain a motion to take the disciplinary hearing. So moved based on the allegations pres presented. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none. A motion to take to disciplinary hearing based on the uh, alleged allegations is approved.
James Howard. Our next item is James F. Howard doing business as James F. Howard Construction, Inc. State certified license number CGC 1517819. Contractor competency board complaint number 230556COM. It's in regard to Cami Miller, homeowner complainant at 805 Shadow Ridge Drive. Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Proper notice was sent to the respondent. Ms. Miller, are you present today? Yes. And are you going to provide testimony for this case? Thank you. Mr. Howard, are you present today? Yes. And are you going to provide testimony for this case? Yes. Thank you. If you could both stand and please be sworn in. And just a reminder, Ms. Reber was already sworn. Ms. Reber, was a formal complaint filed with the board, and on what date was it filed? Uh, yes, it was May 11th, 2023. Were you able to communicate with the complainant about the case? Yes, I was. And were you able to communicate with the respondent about the case? Um, I requested um, information, and he did not respond. Uh, did the complainant provide any supporting documentation, and is it attached to the agenda as backup? She did, and it is attached. And did the respondent provide any supporting documentation? He did not. Uh, were permits obtained? If so, when and what are their current status? No permitting was obtained. Staff would request that the documentation attached to the agenda as backup be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. All documentation presented will be entered into evidence. Ms. Reber, were you able to assign any alleged violations to the case? If so, please state each one and your justification. Code section 1837C5. Um, in the documentation, the property owner um, has a, uh, a letter between her and Mr. Howard, basically uh, there was a, a request for a down payment. This was going to be a, a new single family dwelling. There was a request for the down payment um, or upfront cost, I think is what it was referred to in the communication. And that was uh, $15,000. In that communication, um, she alleges, she's writing this to Mr. Howard, that when she gave it to him, he said, this is a, a blessing, um, my business is, is going under and I needed this money. Um, code section 1837 C6, uh, this, this property originally started, it was going to be a home for Miss Miller's daughter going through the urban infill program. So Miss Miller did, uh, on her daughter's behalf, deed this piece of property over to Mr. Howard. Um, the daughter it ended up gonna take too long or something, so the daughter ended up buying a new home. So uh, Mr. Miller and Ms. Howard agreed that she would have a home built on that property. So she allowed him to keep the property deeded in her name. Um, and also at that time she gave the $15,000 up, up front cost is how it was referred to. Uh, code section 1837D10 abandonment, um, nothing nothing ever occurred, no land was ever cleared, no permits were ever pulled, uh, no work ever commenced. Excuse me just a minute. And then code section 1837 D13 C2 and that's per Florida Statute 489.126 to A1. That's failure to obtain uh, 
permits after monies were received and failing to commence any work. Ms. Miller? If you'd like to come forward and address the board in the regard to your case, if you could just state your name and address. My name is Cami Miller. My address is 200 Creekview Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32503. Um, as Ms. Reber stated, I purchased the land originally for my daughter. That was back in 2021, I believe it was, spring. Uh, we did it, went to Mr. Howard's residence. We did the contract. A year later, still nothing. Since I still had the land, you know, my daughter decided to move on. She had had a baby, so she wanted to, she needed a place to live. So since I still had the land, my ex-husband, which, which was my daughter's father, and Mr. Howard's best friend, because I've been knowing Mr. Howard for over 30 years since high school, we agreed, since his business was going under and he needed $15,000 to get the business line of credit or whatever it was for, I provided that in exchange for him building a custom home for me, and he said he would make it his top priority. I provided that certified check, $15,000, June 1st of last year, and to date, still nothing. You call him, no answer. Um, once I finally filed the complaint, then he started calling me, saying he doesn't want to go to jail. And I explained to him, I'm not trying to send you to jail, either build my house or return my money. Because it's, um, in my opinion, just, it's just not the right thing to do. So that's why I'm here today. I want my $15,000 back. That's in a nutshell, just to keep it short. Any questions? <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Howard? I'm sorry, can I say one more thing? Yes, yes ma'am. Um, in regards to the plans that he gave me, those are even plans for my house. Once I got here and I looked at this, I actually have the plans for someone else's in this room. I have their plans. I have those plans in my car. I also have the email that he sent to me of those plans, and I explained to him that's not what I asked for. He said he used he was using those plans to save money. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Howard. If you could state your name and address for the record. James Howard, uh, 1310 Missouri Boulevard, Pensacola, Florida, um, 32514. I'm completely shocked. Um, as she said, I've known them since high school. She's my best friend. Him and I made a personal deal for some, for some money uh, for a closing. My business was not going over. Going under, I explained that to Miss Miller. My dealing, my business was with him. He passed away in December. This is my best friend growing up. Um, him and I made a deal. The deal that he made with her, with his ex-wife, was that I would come in after her daughter didn't qualify for the other program. Their lot was not qualifying for the first-time home buyer program. So, seeing that she'd already purchased a lot. Him and I was trying to work something out to build them a home, build her a home. My, all my com communication was with him. Um, once he passed away in December, she stepped in the picture and said, he's no longer here. We're doing this my way. We went to the lot. We had a meeting. He had some el something else arranged for someone else to clear the lot um, around the perimeter. I was just to put the footprint of the house. He went through the details with the plan, how they wanted it. She wanted all the change. She made changes. Um, when we met at the lot, she said, I want all the trees gone. I said, that's not the understanding him and I had. She goes, he's no longer here. We're doing this my way. I said, okay. After the communication, you know, she wanted this instant. She said, I got something to go happening in June or July. This is in January. In June or July, I'm going to need my house. This is not realistic. To build a $400,000 house for $200,000, it's not realistic. She, she sent me a letter um, terminating the contract. I met with her, tried to explain, tried to resolve the matter, explain all the details. She said, well, no, I just want my property back. I said, I don't have your property. I can't do nothing with it. It's signed over for financing purposes. Went back, signed the paperwork, had the property sent back to her. Um, the $15,000, I 
I explained to her that the money that was put in, it was never, we never had a plan or anything set up. Kim and I was going off a plan, another plan that I already had. Um, she said, well, I don't like that. After the fact, after the agreement's been made, she speaks up. Like I said, I've been dealing with him. I said, okay, um, you don't like that plan. I'll refund your money. I can't pull money out of my business, but when I close a particular job in June, I'll get with you and we'll find out what I paid for surveys, what we did for clearing, how much we have in the job, period, and then we'll subtract out and give you your money. All right, I was in a wreck in June on the interstate hit by 18 wheeler. So I didn't close the house out yet, it hasn't closed. But I find out that she's on this list for this here. So I haven't communicated anymore until today. But we had an understanding about the money and all this about the daughter. I don't know if he's not, wasn't conveying over to her, but her daughter didn't qualify based on the lot for the program. I don't have nothing to do with me. Um, as far as not permitting, we made the deal. There was no, there was no plans or anything. It was a personal loan for me to close on some financing on some property, which was for a construction loan. I don't know where this came in the picture. It saved my business. I've been in business 23 years. I don't know why she thought that. So do you have the money to pay her back and the calculations now? No, I haven't closed yet. I was supposed to close due to close that particular job. I told her it would have to come out of my profits. My, I can't take it out of just business. But due to the wreck, I was out for two weeks. When I come out of the hospital, um, we haven't closed yet. So I'm anywhere from two, to, two weeks to a month from closing. But when I come out, I get a letter saying, hey, I need to be on the board here. I called her before the wreck, and she goes, no, I hadn't talked to Melissa. I don't know what that's about. I hadn't heard any more from her from the initial when I turned that in. Mr. Chair, so, so you're saying the 15000 was not a deposit? No, it wasn't. In fact, if you show you the contract, the deposit is 32000 The $15,000 was a personal loan. And whatever, I don't know what he told her, but she showed up with the check. And it was for some real estate that was closed on for a credit line. But when we, when that check was cut, there was no plans. There was no understanding for no house. None of that. But I did tell him I'll credit her money when we get ready to build on the deposit. Deposit's 32000 But we never, we never made it to that point. Did you sign a contract with them? Yes, we did. But we was not ready to build is what I'm saying. Normally when you sign a contract with a deposit, we have plans or whatever, we're ready to go permitting. We were not at that stage. Yeah, by, by the law here, you once you receive a deposit. It was not a deposit at that time. Him and I made a loan. It was not a deposit at that Did time. Did you have a piece of paper that says it was a loan? No, I didn't know. And he died. I didn't know. No. No, I don't have paper. She knows that. So the money came from him or from Miss Miller? It came from her. I was When I was home and I told him, hey, I'm short on this, this, and him and I was just talking. Talked to her on a daily basis. He had moved to Tallahassee. He called back. He said, hey, give me a minute. He told her, hey, this would be in your favor. He can work some out with the house that you're wanting. He said, hey, go to answer your door. She'll be there in a few minutes. Somebody will be there in a few minutes with the money you need. And it was her. And that's when I told her, this is a blessing. She can verify this. But all for saving my business, a blessing for me to close for a credit line for some property that we were closing. It was for the title company. Yes, sir, that's correct. The receipt says deposit on house.
and I think I see a name, James Howard. Builder. 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 Right. What I mean, I that's pretty, what, what you just told me and what's on this screen is two different things. It is. So, it which is, is correct. I'm in agreement what you told me or what's legal real on the screen here. <laughs> you it know is. What I'm I thought I was making a deal with my friend. I had no idea. This is outrageous right here for her to, she knows the truth of everything and how it all went. And I told her I would give her a credit towards the house for me to be, for me to build a house. He wants, she wanted extra stuff in the house. Whatever personal discrepancy, that, that's not our thing. I agree. We're, we're just I was looking told at line, I was told out of line to make that deal that way. I can see how that looks. It's not just how it looks, it's how it is. I mean, this is well, okay. straight up, you know what I'm saying? I do understand completely. And, and she and I have talked about that. And that's why I said, hey, I called her, I guess the beginning of June or maybe the end of May. I said, listen, I've got to get this house closed. It'll close at the end of the month and I'll be able to settle up with you and we'll get all this straight. She goes, okay, no problem. When was the last time I talked to her? But you haven't started any deal with the house. <laughs> there was no house to start. I don't have a plan. I don't have... What, what he wanted to do, she didn't want that. She's, now, I just found that out in January when she terminated the contract. So you say there's... You say there's nothing, but yet you have a contract. For a plan... Let me, let me make this clear. It, it, it's not making sense, okay. Mr. Howard, okay. that you said you didn't have house. anything, but you've got a contract here. You said you didn't get money for a house, but the receipt says it is. I, 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 I'm not understanding. I'll yeah, be honest I, with you. I was building another house at another location similar to so, what he felt she wanted. So then that's what you agreed to build for them, that, that similar house? Yes, yeah, somewhat, yes. So then you did have a, an agreement. And you did have a plan. We had, we had a start of a plan. So again, you're saying what you're saying to us verbally, but what you have in paper here is different. I agree. What I did was totally out of line. I thought I was dealing with, like I said, this is my best friend. I thought I was dealing with basically family. And I was working to deal with them that would benefit them later. But contract-wise, I was totally out of line. Does and the she and I have discussed that. Does the contract construction agreement you have here have the amount of the deposit that you're supposed to get? I'm sorry, Mr. Bell. Does the contract that's on the screen have the amount of deposit that you're yes. supposed to receive? Yes. Would that be? That's not all the contract. There's a draw sheet there. And it spells out the deposit and the breakdown of the house. So that's not a complete contract. It's normally right after the scope of work. So do you have that? I have, yes, I have a copy of it. I don't have it with me. And the deposit you're saying was 30000 15%. And this is? Part of that deposit, correct. So it's going towards the deposit. That would give her credit towards that deposit. Okay. And I explained to them that typically on a custom home, this is percentage that goes down, whatever. But him and I made an agreement that her fifteen would be credited towards that. Okay. Once we get all the details worked out. So what she wants is her fifteen thousand dollars back. Correct. That's the understanding we had. Okay. I explained there was surveys done, there was some maintenance on the the lot, um, as far as keeping it cut, stuff like that, um, and there was something else. I said, well, hey, once we get to that point, I'll subtract that out. I think there was like a eight nine hundred dollar survey, a um, couple other things. 
And the survey was done initially with the contract for the daughter when all that was, that was a totally different plan. But the program wouldn't allow for the location of So if that. she gets $15,000, you don't have a problem. Correct. That was the last thing. The lot's been turned if over. If you get $15,000, you don't have any problem? When can you give her $15,000? When the, when the jobs that I have closed, I told her we have to come out of the profit. I couldn't pull it from the work, other stuff. And I had anticipated when I spoke with her in May that that would be done by the end of June. So does that mean that you've taken that 15000 deposited it, and used it elsewhere if you don't have it? Correct. It was used at the closing uh, a year be, ago. Be careful why you had your answer because you just incriminated yourself. No, it wasn't a, it wasn't a deposit. It was a loan. It was a loan. It Him says, and I it, it, Mr. Howard, it is a deposit. You may not think it is. It's a deposit. It's written on there in your signature. Okay. And if you use that money for a different job, the old Rob Peter to pay Paul Ponzi. No, 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 no. It was never for a different job. Well, then why don't you have the 15000 to pay her back right now? You see what happened, and you you familiar, everybody in the world's familiar with what's been going on in our county. That's right. And that rolling of the money is what gets into where it was at. Right. That's totally legal. Because when you, when somebody gives you money for a deposit, that money is for that job. And so you should have that money left sitting somewhere in an account. If if you spent, I don't know, 800, if you spent 1,000 of it, if you spent 2,000 of it, then you should have the ability to provide the 13, 14, whatever balance back with the accounting of what was spent. And I'll reflect to our legal to make sure that that's properly, wow, your counsel to make sure that's, that's proper. Yeah, I, I completely understand what you're saying. That was never an agreement. The agreement towards the house was after, the, after that fact so that the loan, because before she came to me, six months before, wanted to invest in, <clears throat> Put some money up to build some houses. You got, Mr. Howard, you got the problem is that your agreement was verbal. What's written is totally different. I do understand that. That $15,000 is a deposit on a house. Okay. And you took it and used it for something else. That's right. That's a violation of law. It is. Make a motion to send it to disciplinary. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion is approved to send to disciplinary here based on the allegations made. That's it. Our next item before the board is James F. Howard doing business as James F. Howard Construction, Inc. State certified license number CGC 1517819. Contractor competency board complaint number 22080148 COM. It's in regard to Natasha Davis, the homeowner complainant at 7872 Sumter Street, Pensacola, Florida 32534. Proper notice was sent to the respondent, and if you recall, this matter has previously come before the board. There were some items that y'all wanted some clarification on. I believe uh, you wanted to provide him with some time to obtain a uh, final on that demolition inspection um, for the permit that he did obtain. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Melissa at this time to give an update. Yeah, Jennifer is correct. Um, it was giving uh, Mr. Howard an opportunity to finish cleaning the lot and get that demolition inspection. Um, that has not happened. I've got some current pictures in there of the condition of the lot. But in the meantime, um, Ms. Davis uh, did take him to civil court and uh, there should be the uh, judgment that she received in, in civil court. Um, I did speak to James and, you know, said to him that, you know, that I understand she's received this. You still have to deal with your open 
permit. However, he felt like it needed to be dealt with. I'll draw your attention to the screen. Here are um, pictures from Ms. Reber who went out um, prior to the agenda going out. This is the current status of the property and the permit has <coughs> not received a final inspection. I believe that Ms. Davis is present. If you would like to hear from her, she will need to be sworn in and Mr. Howard was previously sworn and will remain sworn. And just a reminder to the board, um, I, I don't believe there was too much added except for the final judgment and some updated photos. So I'm going to request that um, we move those items into evidence, the attachments. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded in the discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move the additional documentation into evidence is approved. <clears throat> I'm Natasha Davis. My address is 7872 Summer Street. I'm sorry, you're going to have to speak up. I'm Natasha Davis. My address is 7872 Summer Street, Pensacola, Florida, 32534. And I'm just here still trying to just get the, the matter resolved. He hasn't clear, cleared any of the rest of the, the lot and debris that's still down there, the, the steps and the driveway and all that stuff is still in the, you know, in the ground, on the ground. And he hasn't did anything to finish clearing it out and we did go to a small claims court in May and he told me then that he was going to have the dumpsters and stuff out May 18th but still nothing has been nothing has been done and the judge has awarded me to get the $5,000 that I had for allowances and the $2,000 and $2,000 to get the rest of the debris picked up that hasn't been picked up and then a $350 court cost so I just want the $7,350 in order you know ordered back to me Anybody have any questions? I, I have a question. It, in the civil side, the the judge awarded you the seven thousand something, right? Yes, yes, sir. And you received that? I haven't received it yet. I haven't received it yet. But that's in the civil court arena. Right. Uh huh. Correct. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you say that there was two thousand or something to remove the remaining debris? Did mm -hmm. I hear that? That, that was uh, that's estimate part that of the I received. 7, so once you receive the seven, then you'll be able to pay somebody to take that debris off. Is that what the judge is? That's what the judge is ordering. Yes, sir. Okay. Just want to make sure that's clear then. Yes, because he was supposed to have the stuff picked up, but he didn't get any of the stuff removed. So at this when we point, came in April. he's kind of clear from that because the judge is saying they're going to award you money to pay somebody to do that. Is that what I'm hearing or not? Yes, that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. But he didn't. But you know, he still had to go through it with you guys. He said he was going. He told us, told me in court then that he was going to have it cleaned up before we came here in July. But it's still. That's why the judge gave him that time to finish it up. But it's still nothing has been done yet. Um, Mr. Lister, maybe just to clear that as well. His permit also remains open. So, however. Uh, Mr. Howard chooses to deal with that open permit. Um, I, I did, you know, talk to him and let him know that he still needed to terminate the permit. He still needed to do something. However, he was going to handle that. But if I, I just want to make sure I've got it right, if the judge has allocated money for the remaining track debris to be picked up, then did that did that relieve Mr. Howard from the responsibility of? Finishing that? So, That's a question no, I have. He's got the permit. So Mr. Howard is the permit holder. He still has a responsibility to the permit to take some action with that permit, whether it be to cancel that permit out or to finish it out by obtaining the final inspection. I understand that. What I'm saying is the actual removing of the debris, the physical removing of the debris is this judge's order of this money to accommodate that and if that's the case can he just final it out and leave it quote as is because somebody's coming in behind to finish it yeah but she's got to get to seventy two hundred dollars 
I, to, right, for that to all take place. But that's what the judge is awarded. But it's got to come from him. But the judge is awarded that. Yeah. Correct. So, so the judge will make sure that gets transferred, whether he arrests him or confiscates him, whatever they do, you know, however, whatever that process looks like. Um, she has not received the funds to obtain somebody else to do that. But that's not in our hands. That's, Correct. That's out of our hands. Um, he still has a responsibility as a permit holder to do something with that permit. Right. Such as cancel the permit because somebody else is going to finish it. Is that correct? That's up to the permit holder on what he would like to do That's with what, that permit. That's what I thought. I think, he, I think Mr. Howard wants to address that. Mr. Howard, do you want to say what you're going to do? Yes, that's the understanding I had. I explained to the judge when I went to, went to court that I was given by the conference board before coming back here have all the debris removed. That was a plan that was scheduled, had dumpsters, a dumpster scheduled to remove the little debris that was there. But it didn't make sense, and I was in, explained to me that if he's going to award her for someone else to do it, why would I do that? That wouldn't make sense. Uh, it's, it, it's helping railroad me from the first place. So I called Melissa. She sent me an email saying, what you have to do in this circumstance is cancel your permit. I went in, filled out the form, canceled the permit. Yes, I did. And it said it had to be approved um, two days ago. Okay, well then that, that's why. If you did that two days ago, that that was just recently processed. That wasn't prior to the agenda going right, out. So. I, I was under the impression when I left court, I called Melissa, that all parties involved or in reference to this was very much aware of the situation that someone else, I mean, another court had awarded her that. I, I was aware of that, James. That. The, the problem was you, you didn't do anything till two days ago, so I had no idea that you've already requested. Well, that was my remaining thing you well, and I, I did called, discuss. Someone's been on vacation. I kept calling in to come in. And they said it wouldn't be in until today or tomorrow, yesterday or today. So a cancellation refund request form does not get approval by anyone. Well, it's it's the, a, That's what the teller said. And I filled out the form she gave me. But what's happening here is I'm getting, I'm getting railroaded all the way through on this because the refund for the $5,000 was for a, a allowance in the contract. A flooring allowance. I never built a house. Wait a minute. We ain't I, talking about a house. We're talking about demolition. Okay. The awarding of the $7,200 goes against you. Correct. You have to come up with the $7,200 to Correct. give to her. Yes. So uh, what you're seeing on your screen now is our permitting software. And... As of the 12th, which was today at 10.39 a.m., that permit was voided after that was processed. So it was during this hearing. Yeah, I've been calling about it. And when I came in to take care of some other stuff, that was, you know, what was, it, what was she said, oh, well, you have to fill out a form for that. Well, you, it's voided. Your permit's canceled. So that doesn't negate us from still moving forward with the code violations, am I correct? Because violations were committed based on misappropriation of funds just like the case before this. Because you don't have the money that she had given you to give it back to her. That's why you went to court. You went to civil. Now civil courts are saying... No, no. I tore the house down. The house is gone. But the remaining, whatever the balance is that we're talking about to remove the debris... Do you have the financial capability to get that done? If you did, you would have got it done because I know when we met two months ago, we asked you to get it cleared up. You got, you told us so that you would clear it up. And right. that's why we postponed it. Well, I went to court it. the next week. We went to civil court the next I, week. I understand that, but again, even if you're going to civil court, you're going for that same particular reason. So I would think that one would say, let me just get it done and maybe I can go back to my clients and explain to them, look, the work is done. And let's not go to court. I'm sure attorneys understand that sometimes these things happen. Well, we, we did that. We, we talked to try to go through mediation, uh, tried to come. I offered, I said, let me give you $2,500. She says, no, give me 4000 I said, well, if I can pay four, I can pay five. 
I offered her $2,500 that day in court just to make this go away, which I don't, shouldn't owe a dime. I've spent $13,500 on it. But because of the, this board and the civil court, it helped to rob me. Well, this board only makes decisions based on violations per code, so I'm hoping you're not taking this as a personal attack on you or your business. Well, I mean, let me ask this question. If it was cold, the house was tore down. Mm -hmm. Typically, I tear houses down all the time. When we tear them down with the intent of building the house, all the concrete debris will go into the foundation. That's what, That was the plan. That's the reason that was still there. A step, one of the guys working there wanted to step, had to be picked up, but... That wouldn't have been, you know, I didn't think it was a big deal. We could pick that up. Had to bring some equipment to come and lift it up. Clearly, being here today, we know it turned into a big deal. Yeah, and I think that's, that's the true. point I'm trying to put out to you, that if it was a small issue, if it would have been taken care of, and again, I go back to our last meeting when we had this discussion about, I agree. Uh, do you have the capability to go finish it up? You, your words were, and you can go back and look at the minutes. Yes, you know, give us some time. And true. we said that we we're going to skip one month's meeting, so they actually gave you two months instead of one month. But we went so, to court the next week. I understand. And so at that point, yeah. I was like, well, it don't make, she's getting paid double. I mean, still doesn't pay. So I'm going to make That's not the board's problem. Yeah. Right. I'm going to make a motion to go ahead and move this into disciplinary also. A motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move to disciplinary hearing based on the allegations presented is approved we'll take a five minute break you go you, you go ahead
Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. This item is James F. Howard doing business as James F. Howard Construction Incorporated, state certified license number CGC 1517819, contractor competency board complaint number 221216COM. It's in regard to Dylan and Chandra Carlson, homeowners complainants at 11152 Bridge Creek Drive, Pensacola, Florida 32506. Uh, proper notice was sent to the respondent. The complainants are not present. Uh, they live out of town. And Miss um, Reber spoke with Chandra Carlson earlier. And go ahead, Melissa. Um, basically, uh, when we had the last hearing, the inspect they were out there currently working, and the roof was set to, uh, and then eventually got an inspection. It the com whole roof was replaced, and it passed inspection. So that, that matter was handled. So uh, they, they did not feel the need to be present today. Um, Mr. Howard is present and he still remains sworn. Um, Ms. Reber, was there any additional uh, backup documentation that was provided by um, either party? No, there was not. Um, so staff is going to request that the de backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing be moved into evidence. Motion to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded in discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move all documents presented at the uh, probable cause hearing into <laughs> evidence for the disciplinary is approved. I'm just going to remind the board of what was discussed at the previous uh, hearing. Um, the board determined that there was probable cause to believe that the respondent violated Code Section 1837C1, disregard or failure to correct building code violations or any municipal or county building codes, ordinances, or laws of the state of Florida by not correcting the installation deficiencies that were cited within the failed inspection. Code section 1837C2, aiding or abetting any uncertified or unregistered person uh, for subbing the contracted reef, roof project to persons not on his payroll and not licensed to perform the contracted project. Code section 1837D8, mismanagement or misconduct causing financial harm to the customer by not taking precautions to contain roof debris resulting in damage to the pool liner and sewage backup. Code section 1837D9H, failure to supervise construction activities by not ensuring the workers completed the project to code and without causing damage to the homeowner's property. And Code Section 1837D15C, job finished without permit having been pulled, no permit until caught after job or late permit during the job, resulting in missed inspection or inspections, uh, by failing to obtain the required permit prior to commencement and completion of the project. Uh, permit was obtained after the work was performed. Mr. Howard, this is your opportunity to come to the podium and speak to those particular violations, okay? While he's coming up, the, the it's all been remediated, the roof and everything's been completed? It is my understanding that the existing roof that was present at the time of the previous hearing has been completely torn off and redone, and it has passed final inspection. As far as this go, I was under the impression that I had to go back, fix the roof where it didn't pass inspection. We went back, took care of the roof where it passed, it passed inspection. We can go, so what, what we have to do is make a, a determination on each count. We can go through those if you would like. Um, unless Mr. Howard would like to address each individual count as well? Um, there was, it was supervised. We did this, okay. It, everything was supervised. I was there. Um, there was no damage. Uh, when it attempted to file on, on the insurance, 
the adjuster said that he didn't see it as possible pool line. The pool's completely on the opposite side of the yard. There was no damage. Um, I supervised the job. As I stood on the first meeting, the hearing, saying that the way it was installed was correct. The county said it wasn't. It needed to laugh. Went back, redid it, passed inspection. I read them out for you. <laughs> Count one, does the board find the respondent in violation for code se of code section 1837C1 by not correcting the installation deficiencies cited within the failed inspection? Mr. Chair, I move that we dismiss count one. Second. Or not in violation. Respondent not in violation. Not. Thank you. Thank you. As to count two, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837C2 by subbing the contracted re-roof project to persons that were not on his payroll and not licensed to perform the contracted project? Motion to find him guilty of violation of code two. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we find guilty of section 18-37C2 with a fine of $100, minimum fine. Motion on the floor, is there a second? Second it. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Seeing none. Uh, motion to find him guilty of count two, or in violation of count two, is approved with a one hundred dollar fine. Chair, yes. Can you turn your mic on? Like, you no. need to share the brain. As to count three, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section eighteen thirty seven D eight? by not taking precautions to contain roof debris resulting in damage to the pool liner and sewage backup. I'll make a motion not to find him in violation of this section. I'll second. The motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign, being none. The motion to find not guilty of count three is approved. As to count four, does the board find the respondent in violation of Escambia County Code Section 1837D9H by not ensuring that workers completed the project code and without causing damage to the homeowner's property? I'll make a motion not to find him in violation as to count four. Is the motion, is there a second? A second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none. The motion to find him not guilty of code of count four is approved. As to count five, does the board find the respondent in violation of code section 1837D15C <coughs> by failing to obtain the required permit prior to commencement and completion of the project? Mr. Chair, can I ask a question on this first? Yes. I believe that this was established. Is that correct? Yes. In our previous meeting that this was established. Okay, just want to verify. Can I make a comment on that? Can't. It's up to the chair. Oh, yes. Okay. I f the system had just changed over. I've turned in everything. Notice commencements, the dates. I'm under impression I'm under, I have a permit. The minute I found out that I didn't, I come in and get the permit. I didn't, whatever on the system on, online was not done correctly. So it was not a situation where 
I did some work, went and did a job without a permit, and then after I tried to get a permit. For what it's worth, I wanted to mention that. <coughs> I started and filled out and turned in those commencement and everything prior to doing any work, thinking I have a permit, waiting on the, the email to say, hey, pay this amount. The system was new. If you look at the date, it was just getting, the computer system was just starting. And I've heard contractors all over town talk about that. The online portal was implemented in 2018. This was in 2020. I didn't know about it. Excuse yes, sir. What was that, General? Um, he, he was talking about our online portal system. Yeah. Um, some of our contractors are kind of relatively new to that system, and it, it appears that he, he didn't know really how it operated during that time. I thought it was something that came in after COVID. Uh, no, sir. It actually was implemented in 2018. Mm -hmm. okay. It actually implemented when? In 2018. Wow. Motion on count five. I'll make a motion not to find him in violation of count five. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Being none, the motion to find not guilty of count five is approved. Yes, sir. Um, we also have to make a recommendation to the CILB. Um, I have it up on the screen as to what those can be, and this is in regard to his registered license. Um, Mr. Howard holds several licenses. Uh, this is only in regard to his State. State registered roofing license. Mr. Chair, I move that we make a recommendation to the Construction Industry Licensing Board for no further action on this particular case. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Being none, the motion for no further action, uh, information being sent to the CILB is approved. So, Mr. Howard, what will happen? Because you were found in violation of one count with a, with the small fee, um, you will receive a final order with the details on how to remedy that, okay? Okay. And that's it for that. You're done. I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Is this time to ask you that um, in reference to the demo? Yes, sir. Would that be under my state license? The demolition was pulled under your state certified license, yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that it? Yes, sir. Right. The item next item nine two. Yes, sir. This He's item in jail. is Matthew S. Banks doing business as Banks Construction, LLC, State Registered License Number RR two eight two eight one two zero zero one contractor competency board complaint number two three zero four four three com it's in regard to brian allen homeowner complainant at seven seven two seven deborah drive pensacola florida three two five one four proper notice was hand delivered to the respondent miss reber went um um to the jail and, and hand delivered his notice to him um Mr. Allen um, was present earlier today during this hearing, and he actually had something else he needed to uh, tend to, so he could not stay for this for this hearing. Um, I don't believe there's anyone else in the audience here for either this hearing or the next one. Um, so I'm just going. Miss Reber is already sworn. Um, I'm going to request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded in further discussion. Being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to move all documentation from probable cause hearing into this hearing is approved. Because no one is present and there was not any additional documentation received in regard to this case, we're just going to go through the counts and have a determination on each count. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we find count one guilty. <laughs> let me, violation. Let me, the violation, let me, violation of count one and $5,000 fine. Second. 
Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion for guilty of count one with a $5,000 fine is approved. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we find count two violation with a $5,000 fine and revocation of license. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, Motion to find guilty of count two with a $5,000 fine and revocation of license is approved. Mr. Chair, I move, make a motion that we find a violation count three with a $1,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, the motion to find him guilty of count three with a $1,000 fine is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend to the Construction Industry Licensing Board for the revocation of his license. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none, <coughs> the motion to recommend to the Construction Industry Licensing Board is revocation of license and fines is approved with no further action on their part. That's it for that one. Yeah, yes, sir. Our next item is Jesse W. Lacoste doing business as Lacoste Construction Group, LLC, State Registered License Number RG29110398, Contractor Competency Board Complaint Number 230446COM. It's in regard to Eli and Jenny Smith, homeowner complainant at 6474 Lake Charlene Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. Neither party is present. However, we did receive communication from Mr. Lacoste, but not in regard to this complaint. Um, proper notice was sent. Um, at this time, staff is going to request that the backup documentation and testimony provided at the probable cause hearing be moved into evidence. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign, being none. All documentation uh, presented in the discipline, uh, probable cause hearing will be moved into evidence for a disciplinary hearing. Question it, real quick. Was there a uh, request for any um, restitution? On so any, on, on the previous use? case, Mr. Allen, we did not receive a request for any restitution. However, he could always bring that back to the board if, okay. if he would like. Thank you. Um, Ms. Reber, did we receive any additional documentation in regard to this complaint? We did not. Okay. Um, so we're just going to go through the counts since neither party is present. Um, count one. Mr. Chair. Yes. <laughs> I move that we find in violation count one with a $5,000 fine. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Being none. The motion to find guilty of count one with a $5,000 fine is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that we find count two in violation with a $5,000 fine and revocation of license. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign, being none. The motion to find guilty of count two with a $5,000 fine or revocation of license is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend to the Construction Industry License Board for the revocation of the license of this said case. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Being none. The motion to move all notice to the Construction Industry License Board of revocation of license is approved. We are done. Thank you, sir. We are out of here. <laughs>